All right, so it is zoo week here on now. We continue to feature the animals from the Emperor Valley Zoo. And today, I'm not very, very happy with what they are doing, <laughs> but I have no choice but to do it. Charlene Khan Hi. is with us. Uh, we also have Joel Chapman and... You notice and I'm quite across on the side, right? <laughs> and a very amazing species this morning. This is the anaconda, green anaconda specifically. And what is special about this, it is the largest snake species in the world. It can reach over 30 feet in length, diameter of over a foot, and weigh over 550 pounds when full grown. And how long oh. is this one? So this one is just between, this is about four and a half feet right now. Mm -hmm. And now this is not to be confused with the reticulated python, its cousin, which can grow to longer length slightly. But this Doesn't is considered low. the largest snake to, by pound for pound. It is heaviest snake. They're from South America, and anacondas actually are found in the wild in Trinidad. They're native to our country. Really? Yeah. Uh, so where, how where old is this one? Them? This one is about five years old. So how long would it take to get to that big? Snakes continuously grow throughout their lives, oh. and they can live about 10 years in the wild, longer in captivity, of course, because um, they get vet care and all of that. Mm. Um, so they continue growing, and they can reach a maximum of over 30 feet. Wow. Incredible, very powerful animal. And now, for those of you who visit the zoo, you meet snakes, kids come and hold snakes, snakes go to schools. Those snakes are conditioned for handling. This snake is very different. This is a wild snake, so you can tell by the way I'm holding it. Aggressive species, anaconda are aggressive if you disturb them. They have a nasty bite, very powerful, sharp teeth. So it's pretty strong. He's quite settled right now, but it is, and it's non-venomous, so right. no need to be worried. <laughs> about, about venom, but, but they are constrictors, so yes, to say. Yes, they are constrictors. Okay. So how they feed in the wild, a snake this size can eat um, birds, frogs, small caimans, small animals. So they would bite the animal, take its body, constrict around it like it's on my hand here. He's not trying to constrict me, of course. Oh. I'm not oh. looking. I'm too big <laughs> to be prey. He's just holding on. Mm -hmm. They squeeze that prey till it die and then swallow it whole. Its mouth has very stretchy ligaments, its jaws. It stretch that mouth over the animal, the prey, and swallow it whole. A bigger anaconda, if it grows to full length, like 30 feet or more, can take down jaguars, big caimans, capybara, wild hogs. So wow. you can imagine the strength and power of those. Let's do we have any that size? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I do was going to say yeah. that. Too. Do we have any that size in our zoo? At the no, Emperor Valley zoo? we've got five anacondas. Um, they range from this. This is the smallest one, actually. They're all wild. Um, the largest one is 10 feet. Mm -hmm. And okay, so that's not so bad. But a few years ago, for those of you who came and saw SAP, you remember that huge anaconda right. which was found in Karani? Karani. Yes, right, I so remember, remember anacondas are native. They, they live in wetlands, they're native to our country. Swampy areas, so they're common. They're not dangerous, meaning once you leave animals alone, they leave you alone. So mm -hmm. that huge 17 footer was found um, in Karani, and then um, it was. It, it stayed at the zoo for some time. So when you go to the bird sanctuary tour, these are the snakes that you see in the trees? No, those are cascabels or cooks tr oh. um, tree boa. Okay. These are found more, um, a lot in the river swamp or basically any swampy area, mm -hmm. but they tend to be near in, the, in the water, in the marshy ah, So you parts. see why you're not supposed to go in the water in those swamps? <laughs> <laughs> they, Who does? Who oh, goes? Bro, you don't know how people are, you know. <laughs> they're excellent swimmers, right, Joel? Yeah. yeah, so they they're more cumbersome on land, but they swim very well. Um, so they because they grow to large size, they stay down in the water. And mm -hmm. are they able to attack while in the water? Um, they can. Um, they can yeah, if they wanted to, because they can take down fish and caimans and so on. Wow. Yeah, mm. but they eat a lot of land. Animals what sort as of well. training goes into being able to? Uh, you know, manipulate the snake the way you are? Um, well, a lot, a lot of training. Mm -hmm. So there are zookeepers like Joel here who are versed in handling these snakes. Um, so there's a lot of, we learn from a lot of the older heads at the zoo, the yeah. experience of holding these animals. You, mo you have to be comfortable with snakes to start with. Right. Um, a lot of people scared of snakes, but I think it's just a stigma. Mm -hmm. um, once, they just look different, they're not fluffy, so... <laughs> but we, they're they certain ways. They're, they're slippery they're and they're smelly. Yeah. They, feel, they feel 
This in the way they feel gross. <laughs> you can yeah. touch it. No, touch it. <laughs> I, 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 no, you're not. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, just, yeah. So people think gross. snakes are Carrie slimy. Carrie is so adventurous. Yeah. <laughs> Don't think even. I grew up in the country. <laughs> we have hand sanitizer, have hand sanitizer for you after yes, this. A, a myth is that people think know. snakes oh, are slimy, but they are yes. not. <laughs> so, so we learn how to handle these animals. We have to be very careful. Um, have a pretty good grasp on its head, so that's how it learn to hold it. And yeah. look, it's sticking its tongue out. Yeah, it's trying. It's it's really strong. I can feel the power of the snake. Yeah. Um, by just um holding it there. Do snakes get accustomed to its owner? Some well, if you snakes. raise one from young, um, as we have done, we condition it for educational purposes because we've got a thirteen foot python that kids come and meet all the time. But this yeah, one, you can see a head. small um, <laughs> four and a half foot of hair. It's yeah. wild. It's yes. not going to behave like one that's conditioned. And it must be noted that this is a protected species in yes. our country. Mm -hmm. Just like most snakes, mm -hmm. most snakes in our country, we have over 40 species. Mm -hmm. They are protected. They form, they are a very important part of the ecosystem because they're pest mm -hmm. control. Yes. They feed on a lot of rats. Um, in the environment and other small animals. You, you mentioned 40 species and I need to find out yeah. how many of them can actually kill you with their venom? Only four types of venomous, which are the two types of mapapes mm -hmm. and the two types of coral snakes. We, mm -hmm. and and we have two types of coral snakes. Yes, we have a large coral and a small coral. And uh, that's a dangerous one because children can pick it up thinking it's a decorative item. It, it can, so that's mm -hmm. why it's very important you know, to let your kids know if you do see a snake in the wild, venomous or not, it's no. very important not to interfere with any wild animal and if they we have a wildlife rescue program at the zoo as well yeah um which is 800 4 zoo which is 4966 our wildlife rescue number that members of the public call in because a lot of snakes reach on school compounds on people's homes on rishi's porch <laughs> <laughs> i went to a couple nights ago and there was this yeah this and I just left it go away. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't getting very close that's to it good. at all. Because a long time ago, a lot of people see a snake and say, hey, kill oh it. my gosh, and they, they kill it, yeah, which is really right. wrong because you don't want to kill animals which are important in the environment. Right. They play an important role. So today we have a lot of people almost every day calling for <laughs> us to come and remove snakes mm -hmm. rather than harming them, which is a good sign. So the notion against snake is changing slowly but surely. What's the lifespan of a snake, for example, like this Depending one? How long Depending on the live? species. This one could live about 10 years in the wild and longer in captivity. Mm. Animals generally, with, because they're getting vet care, um, food readily available, no predators and so on. So what do you feed this one? What do you give it on a daily basis? Or how often Joel, do you what, feed it? what do you feed rats. this one? <laughs> rats. Or oh, rats. So yes, rats. How often do you rats give it to rats? Rats and mice. So they're fed every week. Oh, once a week? Once a week. They once a week? Mm. Yes. Oh. So snakes don't eat as often as us or yeah. other animals because they take a while to digest. Interesting. And when yeah. you, have you ever observed it eating? Like if you feed it a rat, mm -hmm. does it, do you see it moving through? Or the, the body? Yeah. No, actually, so when it swallows it, they, remember before they, they swallow it, they wrap their bodies, squeeze it till it dies, and then swallow it whole. So it kind of just, filters through the snake. You might see a bulge, but it's not like you're going to see a rat. A rat. <laughs> oh, I actually <laughs> thought I was going to see no. a rat. Because like, I observed a swelling, like a small, like, swollen area lower down, and I was wondering no, if that No, that's just how you coiled. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. That's probably so your belly. So you're not yeah. going to really see it. Sometimes you see a slight bulge, but you yeah. remember their muscles is crushing that animals and digestion starts happening. But it's really, really fascinating because a lot of people don't even know anacondas live in Trinidad. Yeah. Oh, they are okay, native okay. and remember they are protected and if you do see snakes in school or at home don't harm them but you can call the zoo and we will come and safely remove it and we relocate it to a safer habitat. Now I need to ask very quickly if a snake, bite, snake bites you. Yeah. This <laughs> one if it bites me nothing is going to happen because it's non-venomous. So. If a venomous one bites you you of course seek medical help um, ASAP. ASAP, because that's venom. Do you have contact numbers for you know places that would have anti Well, you would need to go to the hospital as soon as possible. And, and yes. the contact numbers for these zoo if people see a snake and they so want to come. So we've got a wildlife rescue hotline, which is 800 4 zoo 800 4966. All right. I'm yeah. hearing it hissing. hissing yeah. I'm yeah. wondering if when it hisses, that's when the smell sort of becomes no. more yeah, like so, potent. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Carrie was saying, oh, when I came on said, oh, it's smelly. The anacondas do smelly. have a sort of scent. <laughs> yeah. um, but he, he's just hissing because it's a wild animal. Okay. This is not a conditioned animal like the 
friendly ones at the zoo. This is wild. It is aggressive, and he's hissing because that's just part of his natural behavior. So if you let it, if you are to let it go now, it will probably snap at somebody. He will go slithering around the studio, okay, and so if you come close, he will strike at you. All right, All right well. so we're not letting it go. <laughs> no, we are not letting it and go. And we're gonna have so you back here tomorrow. No, Rishi is not going to touch it. <laughs> and while oh, we do I that, we're gonna toss back to <laughs> Dion Batiste, who is in the TTT News Center, standing by with the news.